Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. Today, Pastor Jeremy File is teaching on the application of truth. The Bible instructs us to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Pastor Jeremy is teaching us on how to apply the truth. We believe today's message is going to strengthen, encourage, and maybe even challenge you. Let's head into the sanctuary now with Pastor Jeremy. God didn't give us his word, so it's just mentally something we agree to. We've got to apply it or else all that that's in the word isn't going to go to work in our life. Amen. Let me ask you a question today. I've got a few questions. You don't have to answer out loud. In fact, I'd prefer you not. I want you to think about these questions. How do you determine what's right and what's wrong? Are your feelings a good, good gauge? <laughs> Somebody, no. How about popular opinion? How about if the majority consensus says something? People say it over and over and over and over. After all, we're a democracy. No, we're not. I like if we had the flag out here, our students say it every day. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And then to the democracy for which it, what do they say? See, we just hear something repeated over and over and over. People say, well, it's a democratic republic. I know, but see, that's not what they're saying. They're saying democracy. Democracy, in your mind, every time you hear it, here's what you need in your mind. You know, an equal sign? Democracy equals mob rule. What does mob rule look like? Great example in the Bible. A thieving murderer, Barabbas. See, this shows you how democracy works. Democracy. Pilate was like, if I bring him out, there's no way they want this thief and robber, murdering guy running the streets. He couldn't figure out what Jesus had done. It's always a problem when you don't know the truth. Maybe you haven't been all hot and bothered about something, but if you don't know the truth, you'll make the wrong decision. Because he asks you what is truth. Let's bring Barabbas out. Which do you want me to free? And I really believe this. He thought they were going to say, I'll go ahead and let Jesus go. We don't want a thieving murderer running our streets again. This guy was notorious. But instead, because of the hatred, get this, of the religious sect, they, got, they were able to influence all those others that truly didn't want a murdering thief out to sit there and chant Barabbas, Barabbas, Barabbas. Many of the ones that chanted for Barabbas to be released just not even a week before were saying Hosanna to Jesus. This shows me how quick you can change when pressure's on you. Now here's what's funny. Christians try to eliminate pressure on them, yet pressure reveals what you're made of. How are you going to endure to the end if every time the slightest pressure is put on you, you bolt? I'm out. Forget it. See, Christians sadly have become professional quitters. If God didn't tell you to change anything, but your feelings are screaming to change something, don't obey your feelings. You can't see what all that effect is going to have. Now, the Word of God, better write it down a second time maybe, must be how you assess everything in life. Here's another question. Can you uh, base what you believe is okay on what's trending in churches across America? Yeah, people will do that. Hey, Pastor Jeremy, you're so strict. I went over to such and such church, and I noticed that the, one of the very things you like to call out, they all do. You think, that, you think that's going to change my mind? I've been a part of the church in the United States of America my whole life. I was them before that you've seen them do at the other place. I ain't mad at anybody. But just because you see 50 people do something doesn't mean God gave you the green light to do it. You see, if you're going to assess everything in life by the word, what this is touching then is the way that you have built your conscience. Just because for you, you say, it's okay for me to do that, 
based on what? Well, I like it. Is that a safe God? You see, now right now I'm standing here. I don't like Coca-Colas. I'm not mad at them. I've been addicted to them for years. But once again, made a decision going into the new year. This good year is going to be different. And right now, nothing sounds better to me than my ice water I've been making in my cup I carry around. Yes, I'm seeing history repeat itself. Y'all seen those commercials about not turning into your parents? <laughs> Instead of a big old mug of iced tea, though, I've got ice water. I showed up to basketball practice the other day, and the guys were like, what are you doing, Pastor? What are you drinking? I said, I have my electrolytes I'm mixing. You can ask my wife. I do this probably three or four times a day, taking that big old cup. Ah, oh, I like that water. And I've gotten to where that's what I want. We went out on a date last night, my wife and I, and instead of ordering Coke with my Mexican food, I said, water with lemon. Coke didn't even sound good. Now, there was a day in the not-too-distant past <laughs> where if I even said Mexican food, I said, give me a Coke. I <laughs> drink my Coke with my Mexican food, right? Well, some of y'all are still like that with beer. you got to get that out of your system. Because the difference in a Coke and a beer, they both kill you. But one has spirits attached to it. There's a difference. All right. This is, a, this is fun. Y'all having fun? <laughs> Do you really want to be free? You've got to ask yourself a few questions then. Because it's trending in churches, even in America, does that make something okay? Then why would I even still to this day hear that kind of argument and talk? See, I, so it's amazing. People, well, so you just expect everybody just to listen to your word? No, I expect them to listen to his word. And anytime you're ready, I can show you those 75 scriptures that show you and warn you against alcohol. We're going to look at one of them today. That's not my objective here. I'm just trying to say that's another area. Marriage is another area. How you take your identity. Are you a man? Or are you a woman? And all the other mess going on. What is it that determines right or wrong? How about this? Does family tradition determine what's right and wrong? Okay. Now, some of you couldn't help yourself, so you went ahead and answered out loud. Because the answer is obviously no to all that, right? Everybody say right. That's right, I mean. So if the answer is obviously no, then why do so many people use those exact ways to determine right or wrong? It's amazing to me. We'll say here, well, I can take you through this real simplicity of this. Yes, pastor. No, pastor. We all know the answers. But then we'll say we get out here and we flunk. I mean, just like right out the gate. Big old fat F, like your teacher wrote an F in red and circled it. What were you thinking? This is the sixth time. Now, hey, I've told the story. I didn't really take Spanish class. I, it, me and Spanish didn't take. Couldn't roll my R's, had some other problems. I love Mexican food, but I couldn't speak Spanish. And I, has, I scored a 13 on my test in high school. My, my teacher was like, are you even trying? Let's retake that. What I don't normally tell, I made a 64 the next time. That's still a flunk. Third time around, I passed. Why? Because after you flunk a couple times, surely by now you get it. But you know if you study your Bible, the children of Israel, their life, instead of yours being written for all mankind to see, we could look at their lives and see they flunked it, and they flunked it, and they flunked it, and they flunked it, and they flunked it. And one time the Lord said, ten times. That was ten F's in a row. As horrible as I am at Spanish, I took comfort in knowing I didn't flunk Spanish ten times. I may be dumb when it comes to Spanish, but I ain't that dumb. I finally learned I'm tired of taking the same test over and over and over again. If you'll just settle on what's already been settled, then you already know no matter what storm comes, no matter what wind of doctrine hits your life and family, you stand 
on the word and you don't budge. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418-8913. All of the above that I mentioned in my notes above, meaning all that I've mentioned the last few minutes, family tradition, what's trending, uh, popular opinion, the majority consensus, feelings, all of those create within you a false scale, a false plumb line. Proverbs 11 verse 1 says, dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord. Ah, this is amazing to me. You've heard, I've heard, I've preached because it's in the Bible. Homosexuality is abomination to the Lord. We all know that. But what we hadn't heard near as much is dishonest scales. The way you measure something. A trick scale is an abomination to the Lord. Why? Because a trick scale robs somebody Cheats them, but others benefit. The ones that benefit are celebrated if they get away with it, even in this American culture, because the way they measure it is dishonest. And here's what they think. Ain't no big deal because everyone tells a little white lie now and then. Only problem is you tell a little white lie about the way you measure something, God puts that on the level of homosexuality. Oh, my. Notice how that could slap you in the face sitting here as a church member. Yeah. He said, but a just weight. I like this. That word weight means literally a plummet. That's the word in Hebrew, which means our modern type day use is a plumb bob, plumb line. Okay. What's a plumb line? It is how you measure and see is something truly vertical. Is it true? I love this. It's a tool that is used that will show you what's true. So listen to me. If the word of God is not your plumb line, you will not be able to truly see what's true. I said truly too many times there. Let me say it like this. If the word of God is not your plumb line, you will not be able to see what is true. You won't, you won't see. You'll look from your perspective, and your perspective, it seems right. And everyone says and does what they think is right. And they try. People do this. They'll do what they want to do, and they'll try to find verses to build in a protection so that they can say, I'm right. That preacher's just a meanie judging everybody, putting his convictions and his strictness on everybody. Uh, not the way it really is. I said, the word of God has got to be your plumb line. Are you okay? Yeah. Now don't shout me down just because I'm preaching this good. This will, this will save your life. This could save your family's life. Not just in the here and now. I'm talking about eternally. So you can come down. You can cry. You can love God. You can worship. You can do all this. But if you go out here and use a dishonest scale in the way you handle life, all of this was for naught. You say, I don't believe that. You need to read Ezekiel chapter 3 sometime, chapter 18 and chapter 33. All of them speak along this line. If a righteous man forsakes his righteousness and does evil, all his righteousness will be forgotten. If a wicked man 
forsakes his wickedness and does what's right, all his wickedness will be forgotten. Go study. It's in the Bible. Someday I'll preach it. I have preached it before, but what you need to know is right is always right. Wrong is always wrong. I don't care what convoluted professors tried to pervert your mind. By the way, not all professors are perverted, but there's a lot of perversion going on with professors. Any mind not ruled by this word is perverted. You got that? That means there's perverted preachers. There's perverted everything you want to name. Whatever your vocation is. There's, there's people in your vocation that are perverted because they don't think according to the word. Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 11, honest weights. There's that word weights. That means honest plumb lines, the honest tool used to see if something's true. And scales are the Lord's. See, so he's always on. God's always going to be honest with you. Uh, I know it's a movie line from way back, but the, the facts are you can't handle the truth a lot of times. I just happen to be a truth carrier. So when I show up, I tell the truth, and this is what I found out. Not everybody wants the truth, but if it's the truth, you're going to have to figure out this one thing. What are you going to do about it? I finally came to that. I was like, if it's the truth, I'm not supposed to be a sipping Christian, playing in the world, acting like I'm good with God, then what am I going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? You know what I decided to do? I surrender. A lot of you do yourself good in 2022 to make this your count, just to go ahead and surrender now. Stop fighting this thing, man. Honest weights and scales are the Lord's. Look at this, Proverbs 16, 11. All the weights. So this is talking about honest ones, true ones, accurate ones. All the weights in the bag are his work. You know what this means? God's word is God's work. When I have God's word on it, then I know if I will apply that, God's going to work. I can't just say, oh, that's neat. Oh, that's cool. Look at that story in the book of Acts. Wow. He wants me to live as a book of Acts Christian right now. Ready in season and out. You're sick? Call for the elders. There's been a few times lately, I'm waiting on people, waiting on people, something's happening, I'm standing there, I'm like, I'm just going to pray. You're not asking, I'm just going to pray anyway. You know what I mean? The way the Bible set it up, not me, is you ask. That requires humility. That requires desire. But not everybody has a humbleness about them. Not everyone has a hunger for God to really work. Because when bad things happen, sometimes you get extra attention. Just know this, you'll never be healed of something that you get extra benefits for. People don't like that message. They don't like that message, but it's true. It's true. Well, you, wait a minute, wait a minute. That means that would apply if I'm on disability and I'm getting money from the government. Exactly. Government's not your source. God is. What happens when the government goes belly up? What are you going to do? Who are you going to trust then? You got to transfer that trust to the Lord right now. Man, this is good. There's not near enough shouting in here, but this is good. You know why? It's true. It shows you what's true. If you lean on the arm of flesh, it's going to let you down. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for Lifelinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding Lifelinks and where they meet, you can text the word Lifelinks to the number 74121 or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc or hey, you can give us a call at 806-418-8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Lifelink. God's Word is God's work. Said another way, His Word is his plumb line. That's the way God tells you whether something's true 
or not true, whether something's right or something's wrong. It's his word. It's that simple. God is not complicated. Men try to make God complicated so they can keep others from walking in the truth. Then you always need them. What you need is God. And you need to know his word for every application of life. What do you do? When trouble hits your marriage. What do you do when trouble hits your relationship with your children? What do you do when you don't know what to do? His word. His word is his plumb line. Question, is it your plumb line? Don't answer out loud. Don't answer out loud. Because you're going everybody is going to say yes. But your life will prove it. Your life will prove it, not your words. Why? Many will come to him in that day and say, Lord, Lord. That's the right thing to say. When you see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you're going to all want to say, Lord, Lord. That's good. He said, many, not a few, many. You say, I did this. I prophesied in your name, cast out demons. Hey, who's assigned to do that? The church. Many. We'll say, look at all my wonderful works. He said, depart. I never knew you. You worked lawlessness. What does that mean? His word wasn't your plumb line. It was the way you saw it fit to do things. If you keep doing things the way you see fit, destruction's coming. When God's word is applied, God is at work. Amen. Praise God. Good preaching. Proverbs 20, verse 10. Diverse, that means different weights, different plumb lines, different measures. They are both alike. They're all right with God. Huh? God's not falling off the throne if you use different ways of judging something. Are you here today? Are you, do you see the word I see? Diverse weights and diverse measures, they both are like an abomination. Abomination to the Lord? Here, here's the sad thing. They're not an abomination to those that claim they're following the Lord, but they're an abomination to our leader. Does that make us loyal or disloyal? Ouch. We better, we better get where we're making this year count. Anybody with me? Anybody want to make this year count? Just wave at me. You want to make this year count? Do you? I'm trying to help you today. You're going to have to stop using different ways of judging situations and use the word. You use the word. To use the standard for measuring anything in life, anything you want to name. But if you, your standard is anything but the word, understand that's an abomination to the Lord because he, he went over 1,500 years with all these authors to get us his word. Not so that we're saying, yeah, I think I'll do life my own way. No. So that we actually apply this in our life. Until you apply this, there's a lot in here that will never, ever happen in your life. Uh, I'm convinced my wife and I would not be able to tell people we've got seven kids. If it wasn't for the word. And us applying it. Doctor's report was against that. I just heard, I was on a telephone call with somebody this week, and they said, oh, they called me Jeremy because they've known me a long time. Jeremy, uh, you know, I heard you on the radio telling the story. I, I didn't know that you and your wife had had that, that doctor's report that you couldn't have a baby. That's amazing. That's amazing because she said, I told other people they have seven kids and everybody I tell is like, whoa, do they know what makes that happen? I said, oh, I've heard that so many times. I get my guitar out and play like Char Charlie Daniels over here on the fiddle. I done heard that so many times. I'll just play another tune for you. Yeah, I know what makes it happen. Yeah, quite clear on it. Praise God. But when the doctor says you can't, God still says you can Doctor says you're going to die. The Bible says you'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Somebody says, wait, wait, wait. You're saying you won't die? Look, if you're in Christ Jesus, you truly never die because your spirit's alive 
from now on. Eternal life is something that already started when you received Jesus. You may lay this body down, and that's what the doctor's telling you. You're sick, you're going to die, but if you will take the word for you and apply it, and instead of saying, well, look, isn't that neat? The psalmist said he would live and not die. Cool, that's a cool verse. Until you take that and apply it for your life, it won't work for you. Are y'all catching my drift in this message series yet? Do you see why this might be the most important series ever? If you're distracted and uh, thinking, oh, I've got to hurry, we got football today, this and that, who cares? Who cares? Just in case we're not tracking with the Lord yet, not catching the message. A few verses later, he says, diverse weights. I say, this is what's amazing is how many times this is in the Bible. If it's in there once, we should pay attention. For it to be repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated. My, 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 we should pay attention. Diverse, different ways of measuring are an abomination to the Lord. Dishonest scales are not good. Here's what this means. Any area of your life where the word is not applied, it ends up being crooked. And everyone gets to see your life. And they see it. They may never acknowledge it. We're such loving people. Most people will never say, wow, what a crooked she shed you have back there. <laughs> what a crooked garage you got going on there. That's amazing. How did it become so crooked? Because I went out there and I just closed one eye and looked and said, yep, yeah, that's straight. That's good. After all, my neighbor said it was good. How many of you would... Go to the trouble to build your house and, and operate that way. Nobody would. And yet something much more important than building our house is building our life on the Word, and we just wing it. Man, I do it. I don't just like everybody else. I'm, who cares? I don't want the life everybody else has. I finally said, I don't want the average American Christian life. Tired of it. Yeah, there's millions that are okay being lukewarm, but God's not okay with it. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. While this does conclude today's message, it does not conclude the series in its entirety. And if you would like to hear the rest of the application of truth, you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc. Or if you're in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett in Amarillo, Texas. Our service times are Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.